In 1955, Pope Pius XII, while giving audience, public audience, to the society of people who are committed to the faith, instituted May 1st has Feast of St. Joseph, the worker, recalling the virtues and values of every worker. And in 1889, Pope Leo XIII declared St. Joseph as a model for proletarians, workers, working sections all over the world. Keeping these two information in mind, we understand that Pope or the Church dedicated May 1st as a day totally dedicated to the workers. Now the workers are remembered as a hard working people for earning and production for the family as well as the society. When Pope Leo XIII talked about proletarians, workers, he remembered workers all over the world struggling, working hard but not given justice for their life. Workers working under capitalists, landlords, industrialists, entrepreneurs, businessmen and so on are not looked after with justice. This was witnessed all over the world, particularly in the industrial world like UK and other European countries where inventions were at large and production was important and therefore workers were taken into different companies, factories, industries, but they were not looked after with the dignity. And that is why the church came forward, dedicated this day to workers. Now, as I already told you, he took St. Joseph as a model. Certainly we come to know how Joseph was dedicated or he committed himself totally to the work that he had. Just to meditate a bit on his life, my brothers and sisters, let us see who Joseph was. We all know that Joseph was foster father of Jesus, husband of Mary. And we know that he was a dreamer. Apart from all this, we may forget one fact that he was a carpenter. This particular aspect of his life is not so much remembered by Catholics because when we look at Joseph, we know he was a holy man, he was a gentleman, he was a perfect man and so on. But on the other side, we may neglect the working aspect of this man, Joseph. Now, looking at his occupation, he was a carpenter. Today, carpentry is not that honored and respected. Whereas at the time of Jesus, people were having different trades and there was no disparity about high-collar job or a blue-collar job or a white-collar job. Every job was honored and respected at the time of Jesus Christ. And therefore, Joseph, while he was a carpenter, he was like any other man working with the tools and wood and so on. Now, what we understand from Joseph is that he taught the job to his son Jesus as a boy. Certainly, Jesus learned the occupation he learned the trade. He worked with the wood and tools. So obviously, Jesus was also a worker. 
till 30 years as a young man, well built, handsome, intelligent, and wise, and so on, he worked with his father Joseph and he earned money suddenly for the livelihood, for the family. So, nevertheless, Jesus was a carpenter. More than he was a rabbi later, after his uh, entry into public ministry, Joseph was a carpenter, so also is a son, Jesus, was a carpenter. What we could understand is that God taking this trade has his trade along with the common, ordinary men folks of the world. And therefore, today, as we remember, Joseph, he taught the job to his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus had no shame on working this job on this job carpentry, as Joseph did. Another point that we could reflect upon Joseph's integrity is, certainly he must have been an honest man. And a honest man, a sincere man, to his, to his trade and to his work. When people had ordered some material to be made, I believe Joseph must have been very sincere punctual, honest, and integral. So, certainly is a model for all the workers. Not that he was son of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He would have known later at times, as Jesus was growing, Joseph taught him the virtues, taught him the values. This is what is required all over the world. Another point that we could have now is, the church is concerned about workers. In working sector, we have organized sector, unorganized sector. Mental work, physical work. But these days, people who work mentally in the office or in different companies are honored, respected, paid well or more than those people who work with the tools, elements, and uh, materials. Those people who work in the field with their plow, with the bulls and cart, with the tractors these days, are not so much harnessed. People who work with the electrical materials, people who work in the carpentry section, people who work in different uh, job like masonry or cleaning, whatsoever. Unfortunately, our mindset, my, our mindset is such that we always hold high those people who work in the offices and other mental type of work. That is why the church is concerned about this, these workers. And uh, <clears throat> when the church came forward to pray and to plead for the justice of the workers, we can go over to 1931. Joseph Cardin, a Catholic priest, Jesuit priest, is remembered for his support of the workers, mining workers, coal mining workers in Belgium. He started a small association are called Young Workers Association. Young Workers Association. Later on, it developed as Young Men Workers Association. Later on, it became Young Christian Men Workers Association and Young Catholic Workers Association. And that's how we find the development from his concept. What did Joseph Cardin say? Instead of giving fish to the workers, you give the trade how to fish. This is what is understood today in our life also. Instead of giving ration and food these days, of course it is understood. But what Joseph Cardin would advocate is giving the trade for such people to work so that they can earn themselves. 
they can work with dignity instead of stretching hands and begging and receiving and eating. No. Let there be a dignity of each and every one in his work or in her work. Whatever the work that is concerned for every one of us, everything is valuable. A man who works in the gutter, a man who works on the road cleaning, a man or a lady who does the sweeping on the floor, everything is to be valued. Everything is to be honored and respected. Not only those who are sitting in the parliament, not only those people who make laws, not only, who, not only those people who work in the different software, international corporate companies and so on, but everyone who works with the soil, with the nature, is to be honored and respected. In our Indian setup, we always, as I told you, hold a big place for those people who come with a suit and so on. Because you're working in a different companies, and mentally, we hold them high. No, my brothers and sisters, everyone is to be honored equally. Only when there is such spirit of equality comes in the world, then God's justice would be done to everybody. Until then, there will be disparity, discrimination, and uh, what not, injustice. So, concluding, as we meditate upon Joseph's life, the church has made this feast of St. Joseph, recalling those people who are working for uh, others, okay, with the mud, with the soil, with the tools, whatsoever. Let us pray for all those people, ladies and gents, men and women, working not only in the offices level, not only those who have studied high and they are working, but also those people are working with the tools and materials. Imagine, just give you an example, imagine there is no farmer, okay? There is no farmer. Every son of yours, every daughter of yours goes to the office and tries to look for lump sum of earning. Nobody goes to the field. Nobody takes up the plow. Nobody takes up the tractor. Nobody looks uh, about the uh, earth and the soil. What will you do for food? Where will you go for food? Where will you go for food? It is from the earth, food comes out. Remember, when God created the world, he said to the early people, first persons, be fruitful and multiply. I have given the resources of the earth to you. Work on that. Earn from your sweat. Earn from your sweat. Eat from your sweat. So, sitting under AC, air condition system, and doing some sort of work with the papers and all the other things would not suffice for us, for our livelihood. We need all these tradesmen. We need all these people. I would rather say they are better and holier than these people who are working in companies. Because those people who are working in companies they deceive and they cheat and exploit the people who are working in the earth, with the soil. They sweat from morning till evening, putting heart and, heart and mind and soul and body, right? Exploiting their own bodily resources, bringing the products, bringing the crops like paddy or wheat or whatsoever. Unless and until those things come onto the table, you cannot cook your food. You cannot have your food with a hell lot of money in your hand, paper money in your hand, bank balance in your mind, uh, in, the, in the bank. What would you do with all those things? If at all these people don't work. If an electrician does not come to your house and repair the wire, repair some problem, happen there, what will you do for your light? If nobody comes and works with your table and material, their tools, no carpenter there, what will you do for your uh, furnitures? If no one does the work 
of cleaning at home, will you bend down and do it? You look for a, a cleaner, you look for tailor, you look for farmer, you look for carpenter, you look for electrician, you look for plumber. Without them, can you survive? That is why those who are listening to my word, those who are participating in the mass through this media, those who are celebrating the feast of St. Joseph all over the world, we should have that right mind, right mindset. We should regard and respect everyone as a person given by God. So, in your social life, in your economic life, in your uh, family life, always hold high those people who are working with the tools and materials. This is what is required. That's why St. Joseph is teaching. When God could do that carpentry work, why do we discard that carpentry? You don't uh, advocate carpentry for your son and daughter, right? You don't advocate farming, uh, right? Farmer's job to your children, right? You always hold high doctor's job, engineer job, or uh, software job, or uh, accountant job, whatsoever as a big thing. And you spend lakhs and lakhs and lakhs for these uh, trades and these work, but you neglect those people who are working with the tools and the other things. This is a wrong attitude among us also. When it comes to marriage of your daughter and son, you always look for somebody who is working under the government or looking somewhere, I mean, working in some companies. But if you come across a carpenter, if you come across a trade man, you always look, oh, that fellow is a carpenter, this fellow is this. That's why in the gospel we come across, right? Oh, who is this man talking so high? They were referring to Jesus at the synagogue. We know who this guy is. He is coming and talking big things from heaven. We know his mother Mary. We know his brothers and sisters. We know his father carpenter Joseph. Look at that. People were taking mean of Jesus, stature and the work. Because he was talking very high thing. So you also consider those people who speak very high, they are intelligent, they are wise. Right? So, no other people should speak wise to you. No people should speak very high to you. Right? All these people are working in, the, in, in industries, factories, different uh, sectors or unorganized work. You consider them fools. You consider them less human beings. You consider them from low strata of life. That is why, my brothers and sisters, we should consider every work as God-given work. Doesn't matter who earns more, but how one does, that is important. A carpenter who is sincere and honest to his work, punctual and is integral to his work, he is to be highly regarded than a man who works in the company and cheats and exploits the common men common people. So we as a Christians should have a right thinking. It is not in enough to that you participate in the rituals like mass or prayer services or whatsoever. You should have a right understanding of your life. You should be able to respect anyone and everyone equally like you. Remember uh, St. James, I believe, I think in, 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 in his letter, he says, someone comes with a dazzling dress, dressed up so high, like a noble. You tell him, sir, please be seated. And you, you find someone in a shabby dress, work, a dress of a worker, and you tell him, hey, stand that side. Isn't it a disparity? Is this a right worship? Is this the right adoration of God, your God? 
So my brothers and sisters, there are so many things that we need to meditate upon. We take for granted that what we are doing is right. We forget. Huh? We are not aware of our own errors. Social errors, economical errors, right? Family errors, our uh, worship errors. So many errors are there with us. And still we hold on, oh yes, today first Friday, what does it matter for you? What does it for you? What does it matter for you first Friday? First Saturday, what does it matter for you? Or as if the, all the other days are all hopeless days? Every day is a holy day. Every day is a day of God given one to us. So you should not consider only as a first Friday because the tradition started long ago. Okay? Only first Saturday because tradition started long ago. Only Sunday because tradition started long ago. No, not at all. <laughs> every time, every day, every week, every month, chronologically, under God's sight is holy. If you are having a sacred art novena today, why not tomorrow? If you are working today, you are working tomorrow also. You are eating today, you are eating tomorrow also. So what is the matter then? Matter is mindset. Your attitude. Your attitude that you attribute to the day-to-day -day activities. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, while the church tells us, at least the first Friday, that is a thing that we could understand, at least the first Friday, though not every day, at least where you can afford to, at least a Sunday where you have to afford to. So there is a, some sort of uh, exceptional in the rules. Let us all pray for those workers Right? Organized sector, unorganized sector. Those who are in different companies, white collar job, blue collar job, whatever the collar job, every job is a job. One thing you should note, a man who is working in the corporate company, he also stretches his hand to earn his money, right? A man who is working as a carpenter, he also stretches his hand for money, right? So what is the difference then? He also eats rice and he also eats rice. What is the difference? All your mindset, how much you estim estimate, how much you measure out the person in front of you. All right. So as a Christians, joining with Pope Leo XIII, joining with Pope Pius XII, let us Pray for all the workers of the world. Let all the workers of the world be given justice. More than the corporate company workers or more than the white collar job seekers and people, let us also consider, honor, love, respect, pay well to these people who are working with the soil, with the tools as well. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, before we become parliamentarian, before we become doctor, engineer, software company worker, or any type of highly respected worker in these days, we were simple people from the dust. Lord, give us that noble thought. Give us that right understanding that every type of work is to be respected, honored, and given justice. At this unprecedented time of Corona, we pray for all the workers, Lord, all the women folks, child laborers as well those who are working in different companies very particularly farmers that they may be given justice for the labor for the sweat even among us the believers the followers of jesus christ christians baptized 
often we are so particular about rituals masses novenas adorations and things like that but it when it comes to human value we always segregate people under the category of high job low job high worker low worker highly qualified lowly qualified whatsoever take away from our minds lot this sort of wrong attitude rather help us to love everyone not according to what one does but what one is a human person called to be productive for the service of mankind amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit